Welcome to the EPIRB Project Groundwater Sampling Guide. This video focuses on essential elements of reliable groundwater sampling specific to the EPIRB project. It provides practical recommendations on how to develop a database that can provide better and more thorough information on the water quality of aquifers. Most of the emphasis is on quality control techniques pertaining to chemical analysis, but one should keep in mind that there is no substitute for high quality sampling and field measurements. We proceed from the assumption that the well is in a good location and has been built properly. The next task is to collect representative water samples for further analysis. Groundwater sampling consists of five principal steps. The first step, preparation, involves selecting the wells from which to collect samples and to gather the materials needed to carry out the sampling. The second step, well inspection, takes place on site. The objective here is to determine geographical coordinates and take water level measurements. Another step takes place prior to sampling, well purging. Also, field quality parameters need to be measured beforehand in order to ensure the collection of representative samples. The fourth step, sampling, involves a collection of samples using appropriate field devices. Samples should then be stored in properly marked sample containers for identification. The last step is to transport and store the samples in such a way that the samples are neither lost nor damaged en route to the lab. Step 1. Preparation. The sampling process starts with careful planning and preparation. This saves time and helps to minimize problems that tend to occur during field work. Prior to the field trip, the sampling team should study well locations and well design to establish sampling routes. An advanced understanding of the hydrogeology and flow dynamics of a system is also important. Study any previous sampling work that has been done in the area and gather any available information on water quality, hydrogeological characteristics of the aquifers to be sampled, well types and purpose of water use, the well's depth diameter and casing materials, and finally, the well's yield and the number of aquifers across which the well is screened. Field data sheets should be prepared for all wells to be sampled. We recommend filling out as much paperwork as possible before heading out into the field. The following material should be prepared prior to doing any sampling work. Plastic sheets for protecting field equipment from contamination, and a plastic bucket for measuring well yields, the volume of purged groundwater, and field parameters. Disposable rubber gloves for sampling. Nylon rope or cable to use with the sampling baler. A plastic tube for the wasp pump to raise groundwater from the well. A battery for the wasp pump. Coolers and thermal boxes for storing and protecting samples concentrated nitric acid for preserving groundwater samples for metals analysis, adhesive tape for labeling samples, and field sheets for all wells. The laboratory will provide sampling containers and required acids to ensure that the containers remain clean. All field equipment and instruments should be checked beforehand to make sure that they operate according to specifications and have adequate power supply. Step 2. Well inspection. The first thing to do during the second step is to determine the geographical coordinates of each sampling point. Next, use tape and a water level meter to measure the static water level and well depth. This will serve to determine the purge pump's required depth intake. Knowledge of the well's depth helps you to calculate the volume of stagnant groundwater that needs to be pumped from the well prior to sample collection. Information on well depth is sometimes available from previous sampling expeditions or from when the well was drilled originally. Feel free to use this data if need be. Step 3. Well Purging Stagnant water, which is water that has been sitting in the well casing, is quite different both physically and chemically from aquifer water. It is therefore necessary to purge the stagnant water before a representative sample can be obtained. Well purging introduces fresh groundwater into the well, 
which is representative of the samples you want to take. The amount of water to be pumped prior to collecting samples depends on well depth and diameter, the water level, and sampling program requirements. There are two ways to estimate the volume of purge water. The first is to purge the well until pH, specific conductance, and temperature readings of the discharged water are stable. The second is to calculate the volume through a formula that takes into consideration the radius of the well casing and the height of the well's water column. Field quality parameters should be measured at the sampling point after a well is purged and prior to collecting samples. These parameters include measurements of pH, temperature, specific conductance, dissolved oxygen, and total dissolved solids. All relevant field data should be recorded in a field book and also in the groundwater sampling field data sheet. Use caution when working on low capacity wells as water recovery is slow. In low yield wells, a high extent of drawdown might cause the purge pump to dry, which can damage the motor. Step four, sampling. Use a stainless steel or other baler when collecting samples from a purged well or spring to be tested for major ions, nutrients, organic compounds, and dissolved metals. After collecting samples at a given site, thoroughly clean the sampling device in order to avoid cross-contamination of samples taken from different sites. If samples are to be analyzed for dissolved metals, they should be preserved in nitric acid to ensure that ions remain in the solution and are not absorbed into the walls of the sample container. Sample containers should be labeled so that they can be easily and properly identified. Labeling on samples should contain as much information as is practical, such as date and time, name and location of sampling site, or any information about the container's pretreatment or added preservatives to the sample. It is very important to use durable labels. Most samples are preserved in ice, so the labels need to be moisture resistant and the ink should be non-water soluble. It is also important to package the samples carefully, as any vibration during transport may damage the sample containers or render their labels illegible. Step 5. Transportation and Storage in optimal conditions, samples should be transported to the lab every day. Within the EPIRB project, the remote location of sampling points from labs has made this objective difficult when not impossible, in which case samples are kept in coolers and transported to the lab every second day. Samples that need to be stored at low temperature should be put on ice immediately. It is vital to follow all of the basic procedures regarding sample transportation and storage. This will ensure that samples remain mostly unaltered and suitable for lab analysis. During storage, take care that samples do not degrade due to inappropriate storage conditions, excessive storage time, and cross-contamination with other samples. Here are some recommended sources for further reading. We hope that the information on this video is helpful. If you wish to obtain further details, there are a number of websites with plenty of in-depth information available. We especially recommend the Manual for Groundwater Field Surveys, which was prepared in the framework of the EPIRB project. If you wish to collect samples according to officially approved standardized procedures, we recommend obtaining an official copy of the ISO standards. Thank you for watching.